All right. What's up, guys? Greetings from the Barbell Live Show. Um, I'm your host, Tony Camper, and today we have a couple guest hosts. One, Mr. Larry Carter, the guru. We have Big Will Goldberg and hey. your truly Carla Thompson. Say hi, guys. Hey. 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 All right, so um, today's episode is going to be a little different than what we've been doing. Um, we're just going to jump right into some questions and answers. Uh, we've taken some questions that we've seen on the page for the, from the past week, and um, we've written them down. So uh, I'll just go ahead and get it started. Um, our first question is from my boy from Afghanistan, uh, Larry Jackson, a.k.a. Silverback. He says, those with high metabolism, how did you bulk up? Do you guys recommend certain foods or protein supplements? Um, does anyone want to start off and uh, answer to this? Uh, well, I don't usually bulk, so <laughs> I think you're, you're going to have to take that one, Tony. Okay. All right, so... I'm a, uh, what they call it, a hard gainer. And, uh, what's helped me put on weight is just uh, consistency. So, eating, eating, eating. I mean, as soon as you wake up, your mind should be in that mindset to eat. Um, I get up, I have a big breakfast. Um, next thing you know, I'm having a snack. Next thing you know, I'm having a big lunch. Another snack. I mean, I'm just constantly trying to eat, trying to eat, trying to eat. And, um, you know, a high-quality weight gainer doesn't hurt as well. Um, you can get those extra calories in pretty easy that way. Um, my metabolism is insane, so it's really hard for me to put on weight. But um, just eating a shit ton and a good quality uh, weight gainer has helped me out. Um you know, you're, if you're working out and you're training hard, you're burning a lot of calories. So you got to be able to not only meet that, that uh, caloric need, but exceed it. So that's my advice. Just eat a shit ton, get a good uh, weight gainer, and just eat, eat, eat. So you just feel like, bleh. not that bad, but yeah. All right, thanks, Larry. Uh, next question, let's see. Chaos Q. Gittins says, why do people state how much they weigh when they lift? Does your height have nothing to do with it, or is it just you weigh 150 pounds and can bench 315 pounds? How tall or short are you? Um, the way that's written is a little confusing, but I get what he's asking. Um, does anyone want to chime in on that? All right, I'll uh, go ahead and answer. So, if you know anything about powerlifting, they have different weight classes. Um, it's just like any sport, like for instance, UFC, boxing. Um, if it's all relative, so your weight is relative to how much you can lift for the most part. For instance, I've competed in the 148 division. I'm glad that, that they have divisions because I don't want to be going up against someone who weighs 200 pounds and be expected to lift as much or outlift these guys because these guys are naturally bigger. They have more mass. They have, like I said, it's relative. However, how much you weigh is relative to around what you should be lifting and more. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some beasts out there that are, uh, like my dad, for instance, he competed in uh, 165. And he was lifting more than guys two, three weight divisions above him. Um, so there are exceptions to that rule. But for the most part, you have weight divisions for a reason. So when someone's saying, hey, guys, I benched uh, 275 and I weigh 155 pounds, you know, they're trying to give you a mindset of how big they are in, in uh, relation to how much they lifted. So um, that's pretty much why they do it. Uh, real quick, let me uh, let me welcome to the show 
for the first time ever, uh, <laughs> for basic training, uh, your admin, Charles Mitchell. Say what's hey, up, Charles. What's up, man? Hey, Charles. <laughs> we call this guy the shadow because he's he just he's, he, it's man, easier look, to, man. Uh, look. look at him than, than to oh, see no. him. I'll be I'll be I'll be more in tune when I get back stateside, man. I'll be stateside in two weeks. You're still in England? Yeah, I leave on the 29th. Okay. So. Uh, well, now you can help us with some of these questions. Let me see what's the next one. Uh, Angel Marie Rowe asked, I did bench squats yesterday and for the first time, and do you rest your ass on the bench for a few seconds and get up or just touch and stand? I did both because I wasn't sure which way. LOL. Um, anyone want to answer that? Yeah, I'll take that. Um, I actually do box squats as an accessory movement to whatever program I'm doing, strength training program I'm doing. Um, so it's very critical that you learn real perfect form when it comes to the box squat. Um, as the weight gets heavier, you don't want to... I mean, even when the weight is light, you don't want to relax your core when you come down. You want to keep everything tight. Um, also, you want to stick your butt back a lot and touch and come up. Um, with the strongman training, I actually sit and then come up, but I, I don't relax so my back, my lower back gets rounded because that's how you can really hurt yourself. So I, it really takes a lot of focus and concentration on doing the box squats. And I really um, urge that you learn the perfect form before attempting to go heavy with weights on that one. I totally agree with Carla and what Carla's saying there. Um, you definitely, when doing the box squats, don't want to let your background because a lot of people get injured like that and you know to start out you probably want to go a lot lighter and make sure you keep that back you know nice and firm and just don't let it round but you do sit um, for a moment before going back up cool um yeah appreciate you guys chiming in on that one uh let's see our next question is from Reginald Bebry. Sorry if I didn't say that right. Um, it says, FitFam, do any of y'all know the best natural organization to compete in? Now, I'm not too sure if he's talking about powerlifting or bodybuilding. Um, <clears throat> I know I, I can speak on the powerlifting part. Um, I recommend NASA, National, National Association Strength... Wait. National Athletic Strength Association, my bad. Um, those guys are awesome. Um, I've competed with them a couple times. My dad, who put me on to them, he's competed with them a few times. They're mostly um, on the west, uh, southwest, Oklahoma, California, um, <clears throat> Texas, um, pretty much on the west coast um, and midwest. Oklahoma, I think, I think I said that. But anyway, so uh, they, they do random drug testing. Um, but besides that, they're just an awesome organization. Uh, there's a, a nice community within it. Everybody supports each other. Um, it, it's great. I've had nothing but good experiences with those guys. Um, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and post a link uh, to their website, and you can check out for yourself. They show the, the upcoming meets. Um, past records, things like that. So um, shout out to Rich Peters and uh, Matthew Lindsay as well. He's a big uh, NASA powerlifter. So um, hopefully that answers your question. Let's see. Next question. N Nicole first, or Nicole, however you say that, spell it different. Um, it says, does anybody have a Fitbit? If you do, which do you have and why do you like it? Anybody want to chime in on that? Because I don't have a Fitbit. I don't have one either. 
I don't like. have a Fitbit. I've had a few friends who've had a Fitbit, and they basically just use it for their calorie tracking for the for the day. Um, a couple of them swear by it, uh, you know, to just keep track of those different things. But for me personally, I know that I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to get my workout in. And, you know, more or less what I'm trying to do during my workout is use a heart rate monitor. So I have my own watch that works with the heart rate monitor to make sure that I'm keeping in a target heart rate so, you know, that I'm burning the calories there. But I, I don't really worry about a Fitbit throughout the day to track those types of things. Now, you know a lot about technology, Larry. Um, would you recommend a certain uh, brand? Because uh, she was asking about the brand as well. Um, I'll have to get back to you on which brand at the moment. There, there were a few that have come out lately, and I haven't really, like I said, kept a lot of track of it just because there's so many and there's so many different uh, features that come out like some of them will allow you to use your phone and so forth um, or you know they'll work with your phone uh, do music like the one that I have that my wife broke um, that one you know did your music and everything along with your heart rate and and whatnot so there, there's more that will come out I'll probably write something up and get back more detail for you Cool, thanks. Um, this yeah. next question from my homegirl, that bar beast, Miss Gina Cavallero. Gina asks for deadlifts. When do you guys do them? Beginning, middle, or toward the end of your workout? Or do you mix it up? Um, anyone want to jump in on that one? Um, at, Go ahead, as Will. For me, as uh, for me, I just basically... Uh, if it's deadlift day, it's deadlift day. I'm not really trying to do a whole lot of other things before or after that because I have to get my mind set ready before I even leave the house when it's deadlift day. Even if I'm not going to PR, but I know I'm going to put in some hard work. So if it's a lighter weight with more reps, whatever it is, I'm still going to be killing it and it's going to take a lot out of me. So um, I usually really don't do any other work uh, lifts when I deadlift or I will as I'm doing now I'll do um, below the knee uh, deadlifts like put the uh, the, the bar on um, on a platform and then you're just basically going from below the knee up and uh, and really that's just a accessory move as well um, yeah, so that's all I have for that. Will, you were going to say something? I might unmute your mic. I, I mix it up. Um, it, sometimes first thing, sometimes the, uh, the last thing I do. Whatever works that day. Like the other, um, yes, today is Saturday. I think uh, Wednesday I did uh, Ed Lives First. Then I did... Uh, Modern leg workouts. Now, is there a reason why you mix it up like that, or do you just randomly switch it up? What do you say? Is there a reason why you you randomly do it like that? I just mix it up, you know. I don't really have. I don't really do a certain. Everything changes. All right, cool. Um, Charles, Larry, anything? Uh, I personally gotta do them first. I can't do anything else. Will, mute your mic. Mute your mic. Go ahead, man. I was just saying that I personally can't do nothing else on deadlift day. That thing take everything out of me. So I feel like if I could do anything else on deadlift day, I ain't go hard enough. You know what I'm saying? So deadlifts yeah. and that's it, man. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Like Carlos said, like Carlos said, mute your mic. Mute your mic. All right. So what I was trying to say was, uh, like like Carla said, uh, if, if I'm deadlifting, I gotta mentally be ready for it. I'm not worried about doing accessory stuff until after the fact. If, but like Charles said, too, 
if if I got time, if I got energy, and you know, I still plan on doing more stuff, then I didn't I didn't go hard enough on the deadlifts. I, deadlifts to me is its own day. Like I go in there and I'm like, all right, deadlifts. Go in there, and try to bang them out, try to do as many as I can. Grab it, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I specifically focus on deadlifts. I don't mix them up. Um, there are those rare occasions where I do like a back day and maybe near the end of my workout, I'll do some kind of some light um, and focus on the contraction at the top just to kind of uh, try to hit that lower back, um, mid back area. What about you, Larry? I, with me, I generally do squats and deadlifts on the same day. So, like, um, I'll do my front and back squats, and then after I do my front and back squats, you know, walk it off a little, then I go in there and do my deadlifts until I can't even walk anymore. So then I crawl out of the gym after that pretty much. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. I've but done, that, uh, go ahead. But that's, that's basically how I do it because, like, I, I feel when I do leg day, I shouldn't be able to walk after I'm done. So when I do the squat, like, if I just do deadlifts, I don't feel like, you know, I hit all of my leg, you know. So I like to go, I like, I like to just feel that it's all dead, you know. Like, when I crawl in bed that night, I'm like, oh, ice the whole leg down. That's fine. All right, well, good question, Gina. Thank you. Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? Um, I, okay, here's a good one. From Vitaly Draval, it says, when your weight changed, do you need to readjust your macros? Um, anyone want to comment on that? Okay. I can speak on this. Um, I did a physique show. uh last year, and um, my approach was strictly counting my macros. So um, to answer your question, yes, you should readjust because once you, you're losing weight or if you're gaining, gaining weight, but say if you're losing weight, it's throwing off your whole caloric needs. So you need to readjust, and as you lose weight, your macros are going to change. So I would say once a week. Check your weight. If it's changed, readjust your macros. Um, that worked for me. So, thanks for the question. Uh, let's see. Starting to run out of questions. Oh, we got, okay, we got some more up here. Here we go. From Kathleen Crawl. She asks, headed to the gym, what's a good pre-workout snack if, you, if you're carb cycling and it's not a carb a no carb day. Normally I'll grab a spoonful of peanut butter. Any suggestions? Anyone want to take that? Um, sometimes I, I do the lunch meat um, nitrate free. Um, that seems to be a, a good snack for me. Um, that's low carb or you know with a, a good amount of protein. Um, other times, you know, the, the peanut butter is good uh, to do, but sometimes I just get tired of peanut butter. And then also the protein shake is another uh, good, you know, easy, quick snack that fills you up. Yeah, you just got to make sure your, your protein is um, low carb. Some proteins are actually uh, pretty high in carbs. That's um, true. Anybody else want to give their take on that? Um, you gotta unmute your mic, Charles. You highlight. You click on your face, click Charles. On your face, Charles. Yeah, 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 I got it. No, I'm just saying. I take Isopure before I go to uh, the gym. Isopure and a pop tart. And a pop tart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A One pop tart. -tart. Pop tart. Yeah, man. All right. Ain't too bad for you. Hit that mute. Um, I would say um, coconut oil. I take um, about a scoop of coconut oil, and um, you're getting your MCTs, medium chain triglycerides, which are uh, great for energy. Um, they also help you burn fat. So 
like like uh, Larry and Charles was saying, if you're taking a, a protein, um, make sure it's no carb or very low. Mix that coconut oil in there, your money. Um, thanks for the question. Carla, did you have anything, Will? You're still on mute. Uh, no, I don't have anything. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for the question, Kathleen. Um, Rafaela Rigo, very sweet, and it's calorie super low. Um, I'm guessing the question is, is there something sweet that's calorie free? Um, it, it, let's see. Anybody want to jump in on that while I think in my head? All right. Well, uh, I would just say stevia. Stevia is sweet. A, a lot of people don't really like the, the the taste. To me, it doesn't bother, me, especially if I mix it with something. So um, stevia is good. Um, honey. I know honey's got calories though. Uh, if you do like the little honey sticks, it's barely any calories, and obviously sweet. So. Um, that would be my suggestion. Anybody else got anything? Yeah, yeah. I said organic honey. Like the real stuff, not the, the store bought stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I do the stevia. I can't, I can't hear you guys, so I, I don't even know what's going on right now. You want to just log off and come back on? Yeah, all right. What are you going to say? I personally do the stevia, but um, I got a tip from uh, a, a keto person that uh, you you do the drops. Uh, most of the stevia brands that you'll find out there, they have other junk mixed in them, so they they generally have like a real bitter taste to them, a bitter aftertaste. So if you do the stevia, it's uh, best to do it like um, in the drops, like. Uh, you can go to Whole Foods or you know one of the stores like that, and I get them like in a little beaker. But you'll you'll notice if you start reading the labels of the stevia that in most of them you'll see like maybe 10% is stevia, and the rest is some other junk that they put in. Um, but the the drops definitely use less. Um, it does take a little bit of getting used to, and there's you know like, but I don't use uh, sucrose. Um, that that has some side effects to it um, that deal more with your intestines. Um, it it actually uh, ends up removing the good bacteria in your intestines. So, you know, you probably want to watch using that. All right, cool, man. Good, uh, good suggestion. Uh, yeah, sucralose is good. I mean, not sucralose. I'm sorry, uh, stevia. And like Larry said, make sure you're not getting the stuff that's mixed with a bunch of Chemicals. Um, all right, so I have a question from Mandy Lacampo. She asks, I know this is going to sound like a dumbass question. Pause. There are no dumb questions, just dumb people. Um, so, but are you supposed to be hungry all the time when attempting to cut fat? Uh, anyone want to start off on that one? What's the question again, Tony? Mandy asks, are you supposed to be hungry when you're trying to cut fat? So basically when you're dieting. Mm, you could take that one. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, you're going to be hungry. Your body's used to eating X amount of calories, and you're going below that. So your body's wanting what it's used to eating. Um, on top of that, more than likely you're cutting out a lot of bad foods. Um, your intestines, your, your gut has uh, this bad, bad bacteria called candida. Um, candida is responsible for telling your brain it wants sugar, it wants salt, you know, it wants the bad stuff. So when you're cutting, naturally you're eliminating a lot of the bad stuff. So 
that candida is, is, is needing it to, to thrive, and it doesn't have it, so it's sending that signal to your brain telling you, hey, give us, give us sugar, give us this crap. Um, but other than that, yeah, you're going to be hungry. You're cutting weight. Um, you're eating a lot less than you're used to, so naturally you're going to be hungry. Um, there are some, some ways around that, like Larry was talking about earlier, um, protein shakes. When I'm hungry uh, during a cut, I'll get a protein shake, and um, that usually kind of takes the edge off a little bit. Um, so, yeah, thanks for the question. And one, thing I, one thing I do, yeah. though, is I, I put, like, to handle the hunger, uh, the coconut oil. Um, like Tony had brought up earlier, um, the, the coconut oil is good for you for a lot of reasons. So, like, I'll mix it with my coffee, and that takes the edge off and, you know, uh, keeps you from, you know, just, like, starving to death. It'll hold you over. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, that's what I'm drinking right now, protein uh, with some espresso and coconut oil. Um, all right, thanks for the question. Let's see. All right, so our girl Venediza asks, so for stubborn quads, what's the best exercise or exercises to get the muscles to pop and tone? I've been killing my legs for a year now and still no definition. My calves are off the chain, but it's taken a long ass time for quads. Who wants to start that one off? Uh, I say uh, front squats. Front squats, okay. Yeah, all day. Now, is the reason why? Is the reason why? I don't know. Me being tall, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I get a better stretch of my quads uh, doing those versus the back squat. And it's just a lot easier on my back, too, so. I like those better than anything else. Cool, cool. Yeah, you got some. Yeah, you got some. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, anybody else? I, I agree with Charles there. That's why I do the front back squat day because I feel like you know it targets it more. But the biggest thing is you got to lift heavy, and hack squats help a lot too. Um, you know, our boy Mike. Uh, turned me on to that with his killer quads. He was like, do those hack squats. And I started noticing more definition popping out doing those hack squats, so for sure that. Are you talking about Mighty Mike or the admin? Admin Mike. Mike. Both, okay. both have impressive legs. Both have impressive quads, but admin Mike, you know, I, you know, I talked to him more, so he was like, yeah. hey, hit those hack squats. He was like, you want these? So I was like, let me do that. So I, got, I was like, on a mission to get to the gym, find a machine, and bust out some hack squats. So I, you know, I started adding that in, and yeah, I do notice the difference. Cool, cool. Yeah, we're we're still waiting for Mike to get on the show. I don't, I don't, he's MIA. Um, but yeah, front squats are good. Um, you got anything, Will? I think he's uh, unmuting his mic. Um, one leg, leg extension, that's good for your quads. Okay. Just one at a time, switching it up, alternating? Yeah, one, yeah, one leg at a time. Cool, cool, cool. You know, do like 10, 12 set of reps. You feel the leg burn, one leg, leg press. Cool, man. You know, like he's, uh, Charles said, front squats. So, that's a, yeah, that's a big one though, and uh, I like doing one leg too because uh, you're you're isolating just that one leg. But appreciate that, Will. Um, no problem. My take. On, oh, go ahead. Um, if you if you're really looking for definition, um, I think a lot of reps, at least you know, 15 reps, not. 15, 20 reps, 25 reps at a lighter weight. Even on the leg press machine, I find that that really helps to give me definition when I'm trying to focus on that. Uh, definition and definitely leg extensions. Um, I find if I consistently squat regularly, um, it just it just gets definition by default. Um, squatting, front squatting. 
um, you know, most of everything that I do involves some sort of leg, uh, picking up things. I'm always squatting down to pick up stones or pick up logs or sandbags, whatever it is. Um, so, and all of that involves squatting. So I'm, I feel like when I'm consistent, even not thinking about the definition or trying to get definition, it just happens by default. But if you really want to focus on primarily, you know, getting some definition in your quads, I would say a lot of repetitions and lighter weight. Thank you for that. That's good advice. Um, everyone had really good advice for that question. My take, um, on top of what they said, one big thing is body fat percentage. And I tell people this all the time, especially when it comes to abs. Um, you can train a muscle till you're blue in the face, but if your body percentage, body fat percentage is high, you're still going to have that layer of fat covering the muscle. So you're not going to be able to see definition until you get the body fat percentage uh, lower. Once you lower that body fat percentage, the muscles are going to start showing more. You're going to start seeing more of that definition. So um, basically, take the advice these guys said. Um, do those isolation movements, lots of squats, extensions. Um, I'm pretty sure you're already doing a, a lot of this stuff, but um, but definitely focus on lowering your body fat percentage. As you lo as you lower the the body fat, you're going to start to see more more tone, more definition in your legs. Um, thanks for the question, V. Let's see. What do we have next? Okay. This one is for you, Carla. Uh, Charlie asks, um, Carla, when training for strongman, what is your split and training like exactly? So there's really no split. It all depends on um, just training every week. Uh, once a week um, to just get stronger in everything and if you're uh, planning to compete then you train according to the implements that you're going to use when you compete so at one point I was doing a lot of um, dumbbell presses because I was going to do that in one of the competitions so I had to focus on that at another time I was focusing on the logs a lot um, trying to get um, to a weight where I was, where I needed to be. Um, the one that's coming up next, it's going to be um, heavy, a heavy stone medley, and um, they call it a car deadlift, but I think it's going to be an ATV. I don't know how heavy that is, and I don't really have one to train with. So it really just depends on what you're going to, what you're working towards, what your goal is. Um, if it's just to be stronger in everything, then you just, you know, you just train everything. Um, if there's going to be a deadlift event, then obviously I'm going to focus a lot on that. So it, uh, there's really no said split or said routine. It just all depends on what your goal is, or if you're going to compete, what what you're going to be, you know, what the events are going to be, and that determines the tra training. So I hope that helps. <clears throat> Good advice from uh, our powerlifting queen. <clears throat> All right. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Boy, we've been blasting through these questions. We're almost out. If you guys are out there, um, post some questions so we can answer them. We still have a, a decent amount of time left on the show. Uh, let's see. I'll, do we have anything? All right. Mark Martin has a question that he's trying to work up real quick, so we'll see. There's some people um, questioning, and Vin Diesel says... So basically, cut and do front squats. Got it. So she's thanking you for you guys for that. Marcia said, "Do we do we miss them?" 
Um, let's see. While we wait for a question, anybody uh, want to cover anything real quick? I think Squat Booty has uh, gotten off the chain a little bit. Um, Squat it's, become, it's become a little bit uh, porn booty. Porn booty. Yeah. Um, Squat Booty Saturday is uh, it's, it's a little wild. Yeah, it's you have you have some people that keep it classy, which is cool. I mean, it's hard to well, it's not hard, but it's a fine line. Um. I'll let you know now. We we boot a lot of people on Squat Booty Saturday because the thirst is real. Some of these dudes that never post come out the shadows and start getting creepy with the comments. Um, say some crazy stuff and gotta go. Um, we try to have a little fun with Squat Booty Saturday, but we still gotta keep it classy. And if you get on and you're being disrespectful or you're being um, inappropriate with your comments, you're going to go. So keep that in mind. Um, it does help us get rid of some of these trolls and uh, creepers. But, yeah, just make sure you're keeping it classy. Make sure you got something on. Somebody posted the other week with nothing on at all, and that goes against our uh, nudity rule. But, um, yeah, Squat Booty Saturdays, freaking crazy. But they love it. Let's see. Where's this question at, Marson? Did you get it? No. Oh, hold on. You got something? Yeah. All right. Well. You see it? He asked, did, did um, we miss him? <laughs> Come on, son. This guy. I'm going to hold up a sign like Ed Lover. Come on, son. Come on. Marson. Ex explain to me how uh, you can't make the show, but you can be on Facebook asking corny ass questions. Come on, man. But yes, we always miss you, dude. Let's see. Let's see. All right, we got a question from Charlie. Charlie asks, "What is your number one daily supplement that you never go a day without, or do you just use, or do you use anything at all?" Uh, First off, thanks for the save, Charlie. Um, you guys can jump in on that if you want. Omega threes. I never go without the omega threes. They help for soreness, and your body needs them for your brain and pretty much everything else. So there's not a day that I go without my omega threes. Nice. Yeah, omega threes are crucial. Yeah, I agree with with Larry on that. I have a really good one that I take. Um, and that really helps with soreness and just help to heal faster, recovery. Um, and uh, also my BCAA is in my water because it's the only way I can drink water. And um, always making sure that I take, uh, well, protein shake is not really a supplement, but um, I'll always make sure I have enough protein. Cool, cool. What about you, uh, Charles? You got anything? Nah, not really, man. I take uh, MCT oil every day with my protein shakes like you. Uh, glutamine. I take a lot of glutamine. I don't even know why I take glutamine, to be honest. I just take it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I say the fish oils, the MCT oils and just protein, and that's it. Cool, cool, cool. Um, what about you, bro? What about you, Mic check, Will. Mic check, Will, come on. I don't take nothing for uh, being sore, so I basically just live with it. You don't take any supplements every day, though? Anything in particular? Nope. All, all me. Except sometimes I take creatine. creatine. You know how well it is. Huh? Why is that? I don't know. It's just, I just want to do all me. You know, I don't, I want it to be like known that it's just me. Like I did it. Like I've been, used to take a uh, protein powder and I used to take it all the time and stuff. But I, I tried um, 
pre-workouts. I just haven't, you know, I just decided to stop it, you know. Um, I take, I do take the Walmart brand creatine uh, before and after I work out, but, and that's it. You feel like that helps you at all or what? I think it, it helps with the, uh, the reps, I think. It gives you more energy. You know how it is when we first met Will, though. You know, it was farm games Will, so I'm not surprised Will does everything naturally. He was, like, out there on the farm. You see a chicken walk past, like, I got that. That's protein, homie. Yeah, you're deadlifting trackers and shit. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, for me, I I take certain things. There's not anything where I'm like, oh, my God, I didn't take it today. I'm, I'm screwed. Um, I do take protein daily, um, and that's just to make sure I'm, I'm sustaining the muscle that I have, and, uh, you know, I work out most days, so I definitely want to, um, supplement those, those workouts with some protein afterwards. Uh, I had written an article a few months ago, I just tried to find it, but it's, it disappeared somehow. Maybe Larry could help me with that. But um, yeah, protein, um, omega threes. <clears throat> what else? Um, I take my coffee um, on days that I work. I, I take pre workout, you know, when I'm in a rush. But coffee is is my thing. I'm more of a natural guy, so that helps. Um, that's about it. So, uh, yeah, appreciate the question, Charlie. Let's see, do we have anything else? I have else? one more question, Tony. I mean, right. I, got one. I take, um, you know, these, you know, I, I eat protein bars, and um, I do drink a lot of coffee, so. So you know, coffee and protein bars. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. And, um, uh, I don't know, it's just like, sometimes I... I'm at work or something. I don't eat enough protein, so I gotta eat a lot. I gotta eat protein bars, so that way I can be on top of it. That way I have the right amount of protein that I, a day, you know. Yeah. Um, hit that mic real quick. Hit the mute. Um, hit your mic. Mute it real quick. Okay. So supplements. A lot of people think you have to have supplements. Like there's this big misconception that supplements make you huge and you're not going to get huge without supplements which is not true um, now don't get me wrong supplements are are, are very helpful and they they're vital at times um, but they're just that supplement meaning supplementation meaning uh, giving you something that you are lacking or you can't get normally so you know your protein when you know you're not getting enough from your food um, omega threes because you're not eating enough fish, things like that. So just keep that in mind. There's no miracle supplement. There's nothing that you absolutely need. Um, the, with the exception of uh, multivitamins, I'm a big fan of multivitamins um, because they give you a wide array of vitamins from different foods that you're normally not eating in your daily diet. So um, yeah, multivitamins and uh, Supplements are just that for supplementation. So, thanks for the question. That was a good one. Um, we got any other ones? Let's see. Aha, Azi Farswadi. I'm sorry if I'm butchering these names, guys. I know who you are, though, Azi. Um, buying organic food is expensive but safe. What are your ideas? I can speak on this, but you guys can go ahead first. I'm going to pass on that. Okay. Charles, anything? Oh, Larry, go ahead. I, I tend to buy a lot of organic foods. Um, the reason for that is, you know, you, you don't want all of the chemicals and the pesticides. We have enough chemicals and everything else, so I try to cut down on the chemicals themselves. Um, and, you know, if you pay attention to... Uh, things like antibiotics and animals and that type of thing. Uh, it's more of a health thing uh, as far as that goes. Um, there's no quality in the protein itself. 
but that, that's more or less what it is. Um, I try to make sure with vegetables, especially uh, your leaf greens, um, to make sure to get those organic because a lot of pesticides are like linked to different uh, illnesses and stuff that you you know your body may break down over time and get. So that, that's more or less the reason why I go organic. Um, good point, man. Um, if anyone knows me, you know I'm really big on organic food. Um, but it's it's hard to eat organic when you're on the go or, you know, your budget's tight. I completely understand that. I'm not rich, so there's times where, you know, I have to be mindful of the organic things I eat. Um, and a big reason for the organic, like Larry said, is if you knew the shit they spray on your food, you wouldn't want to eat it. There's there's chemicals that have no business inside of your body, and they're wearing full body suits spraying this stuff, and it's absorbed into the food, and then you eat it, and then your body is just full of these toxic chemicals, and they make you lethargic, tired, they're responsible for all kinds of illnesses, mostly cancer. I mean, the list goes on and on. Do your research. I'm not just saying this. Like, it's it's common knowledge. So, um, there are certain foods and like fruits and vegetables that you don't you can get away with not doing organic. Um, those are typically the ones that have like an outer layer. Um, for instance, like uh, pineapples or uh, bananas. Um, coconuts, things like that. So think about what you're buying, and if it's uh, something that has a protective layer on the outside, um, those chemicals aren't really getting to the actual food that you're eating. Um, like Larry said, leafy greens, things like that. You might want to spend a little bit more on the organic version. Um, in all actuality, though, shopping organic isn't really that much more expensive. Um, at the most, it's usually maybe a buck more, something like that. And um, it's a good time to be alive because companies like Walmart, um, meet your mic, um, they're 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 giving out organic food now too. So it's, it's dropping the price on organic. So check your Walmart; they got a lot of organic selection. Um, Carla, you had something? Oh, you. Uh -huh. Oh, my bad. That's Larry, my bad. Uh, one thing I was going to say, a good resource is Marcola.com. He comes out with a lot of stuff. Um, he talks about the different reasons for uh, wanting to do organic. I mean, obviously, with budget and other concerns, there is a balance. I mean, you got to do what you think is right for you and, you know, what you're willing to to tolerate. Like, um, you know, some people will go as far as even with their eggs to do only free-ranged eggs. I mean, I eat too many eggs to be doing free-ranged eggs every day. I mean, uh, unless I want to get some chickens at home, and that's not happening. So, <laughs> you know, you, you got to do what, what works for you, but definitely be knowledgeable. There's a lot of resources out there. Um, and definitely double-check, you know, just because you hear something from one place, Get it from another source, too, and verify it. Because there's a lot of bro science that goes on, and people, you know, hear, oh, my buddy told me this, and it's not exactly accurate. I know we try to give you guys accurate stuff, but definitely go out there and check. Yeah. One last thing before I forget. Another big reason, especially nowadays, to go organic, GMOs. A lot of people don't know what GMOs are. They're genetically modified organisms. Um, I won't sit here and go into a big whole spiel on that. If you follow me on Facebook, you know I'm totally against them, um, and for good reason. So Google GMOs. Um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of counter information put out there saying GMOs are good. Check the sources of who's putting those those articles out there check the ties because usually it's the big corporations who are pushing these things but these things are really 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 bad for your health so when you're eating organic you know that they're not GMO so something to think about um, that was a great question Ozzy I appreciate it uh, let's see we've got another one here 
<laughs> Somebody asks, what's everyone getting their girl for Valentine's Day? Um, I got another one from Junior Clay. He's saying steroids, yay or nay. Um, anyone want to answer that question? I got my opinion on it, so. I look at it, it's kind of all over the industry. Um, to use or not to use, that is the big question. Um, so I, I look at it, I say whatever you decide to do in your life, you want to be educated about it. Don't be a fool, hurt yourself, and then realize, oh, I did this or that the wrong way. I mean, really just go out there and educate yourself. Um, I'm pro-choice. Do what you think you need to do. It's your body at the end of the day. Yeah, good point. Um, Carla, what is, what Charles, anybody? Okay. Well, um, Michael, that was a good point that we made. Um, I'm kind of the same way. I feel like if that's something you feel you want to do, do it, but do it right. Um, know what you're putting in your body because a lot of this stuff is essentially black market, so it's unregulated. Um, you can really do a lot of harm to yourself. I mean, you're putting something inside of you that's not naturally meant to be there. You're changing your whole, you know, chemical composition inside, like your 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 hormone levels, your testosterone, like all this stuff. You're messing with something that's not intended to be messed with like that. Um, now, there's ways to do it right. I mean, look at the guys in the industry that are doing it, and they're they're safe. Um, to me, though, I don't I don't see why you need to do it unless you're trying to become a professional bodybuilder and and like uh, IFBB, IFBB um, you know, because a lot of those guys are juicing. Most of those guys are juicing. So in order to compete, you have to be on an even playing field. Um, that I can understand. Um, but caveat to that is there's, there's natural organizations as well. You don't have to go that route. They may not pay as much, give as much exposure, have uh, as many sponsors, things like that, but it just depends on what you're looking for. Um, do what you got to do. Just make sure, like Larry said, you're knowledgeable about what you're doing. You know what you're putting in. You know the proper dosages, things like that. Um, but one thing to think about is are you ready for the long-term effects um, health-wise um, you can't take steroids forever. So once you get off of them, are you ready for to see your mass go down? Are you ready to see your lifts go down? To some people, that's a huge uh, blow to the to the ego. I mean, you're lifting so much weight for so long, and you're so big. Then you get off of steroids, and you you kind of come back down. I mean, look at guys in the UFC. Uh, what's that one dude's name? He fought Brock Lesnar. I can't think of his name right now, but big ass dude. He was on roids, got off him. Now he, he looks normal. Um, so something to think about. It, it's it's going to be temporary, and then the health side effects as well. I mean, you're messing with your body, your heart, um, your te your natural testosterone levels. Like uh, Jose Canseco, he did steroids for decades, finally got off of them. And his, his testosterone levels were so low because his body was so used to him bringing in the outside testosterone that once he got off of it, it pretty much had stopped producing testosterone because it didn't need to. So that's, a, that's another thing. So um, just be smart about it, guys. Thanks for the question. Let's see. I think we got time for one more, maybe two. Let's see. I saw one up here. Okay. Christina Teeters. What's up, Christina? Um, time to refreshen up the iPod. I need some new tunes to work to. What's your favorite? That's a good question. Um, who wants to go first? Well, I just listen to a lot of reggae and Spanish music that I don't even know what they're saying, but... Um, that's what I listen to. 
Okay, can you uh, name some artists? Oh, some reggae artists? Yeah, what you got? Oh, um, man. I listen to a lot of Lady Saw. Um, Shaggy. Who? Shaggy. Shaggy? Uh, no, his songs are really not that, like, fast. And, you know, I like to really feel like I'm at a dance or something. Um, I can't I can't think of all the names, but just... We should have really him for Squat Booty. Lively music. Huh? We should have him as the Squat Booty thing, you know, Mr. Boombastic. Yeah. <laughs> And I like to listen to Pink as well when I work out. Pink, okay. I'm weird. Cool. Um, how about you, Charles? And don't say no. You gotta have some music. Gotta have some music. Man, all I do is listen to a whole bunch of gangster rap, but I don't even listen to the words. I just listen for the beat. The beat, yeah. You know the beat, yeah. yeah, I just listen for the bass. Yeah, the uh, yeah, what do you say? Give me some artists. Give me some artists. Oh shit. Uh Migos, Jeezy, uh T I, Two Chains. I mean shit. It's a long list. I really don't have like no set list. I go on hip hop, uh one of them little websites and I just get music, you know. I, I never have like a set artist that I listen to. I got you. I got you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, what about you, Larry? I'm kind of like Charles. I, I'll listen to a lot of gangster rap. Um, you, you know, uh, I have some old 50 Cent in there, some DMX. You know, DMX when you when you when you're out there grunting, you know, you're like, ah. <laughs> and you know, he had the dog barking. Um, you know, some mixtape stuff. Um, well, Wayne's good on a mixtape. There's some other mixtapes that are out. That's good. Um, and then, and then I listen to some other stuff. Um, you know, that's uh, not hip hop. Um, that are a few mixed in there. Um, I, I like some of the, you know, like Jay Z stuff. Uh, makes you hustle when you're in the gym. That type of thing. What about you? Uh, got any suggestions for music for the gym? Microphone, Will. I listen to everything. Give me an example. Name an artist. I like 50 Cent. 50 Cent, okay. Cool, cool. Alright. I mean, I like all kinds of music, Tony. All kinds. I can't, you know. I like 50 Cent. Anything that's not... Everything that's good, you know. I like some country, but not too much of it, you know. Some country in the gym, huh? I can see that. All right, cool, man. Um, uh, hit that mute for me. All right, so um, for me, I was like Charles and Larry. I liked uh, mostly that old school hip hop rap. Um, like. Like Larry said, DMX. If if you got DMX on, there's no way you're not going hard in the gym. No way. This dude's barking at you, and oh my goodness. But uh, so I did I did that for a long time. Um, maybe like a year ago, I kind of got turned on to uh, drum and bass. And if you don't know what drum and bass is, it's a weird kind of mix between like uh okay so it's like a hip hop beat with a DJ mixing it up with some like uh, electric kind of techno kind of sounds to it. Um, it's awesome. And Is that it's, more like dubstep? Yeah, it's similar. But um, I'll give you some artists that I listen to. I mean, that's all I listen to in the gym now because it, it's perfect. There's hardly any words. It's just... And, there you go. Mike. Okay. Mike. Um, so here's some artists that I like to listen to. Um, Keys and Crates, um, Bauer. Uh, have you heard the the Harlem Shake song that was out a couple years ago? That's Bauer. Um, Uchi, um, Rel the Soundbender, and um, Trop Killers. 
So those are five artists that I like to listen to. Um, check them out. I think you'll like it. It gets me hyped up, fired up every time in the gym. So, uh, Good question. Let's see. Now, I think we're getting close to wrapping this thing up. All right, one more question, and uh, we should be good to go. Let's see. Oh well, that's a that's that one's a funny one. I don't know if I might ask that one. Uh, might have to. Now, let's hear it. Tony. We want a funny one. <laughs> All right, fuck it. Um, so Venadiza asks. Let's see, where was it? I just lost it. Oh no, I'm sorry, not Venadiza. Charlie. Charlie asks. I have a sort of taboo question. If you're open to answering it, did training ever hinder you from having sex or spending time with your partner? Has it ever caused trouble in paradise? And since uh, Carla was was in such a, uh, she was so determined to get that question, he can answer it first. Uh huh. Um. Well, it. It's good when you have a partner that's about that life, too. So if you're in the gym for three hours, like I am sometimes, I don't get any attitude. When he's gone to the gym, I don't give him any attitude either because we both know that even if we say we're going for an hour, there's just no such thing. Um, so, no, I think it makes everything better. I think it makes your relationship um just stay exciting. I think the sex is always on point and better because you're both like, you know, two hot, sexy bodies and, you know, all that good stuff. Um, so you never lose that attraction for each other. Um, it's 13 years that we're going to be together and we're still like the first time because we always, you know, our bodies are always attracted to each other and... Um, so I think it helps when you do have someone that is about that life too. Um, so I've never really had any problems as far as the gym is concerned. But that's just me. Good answer, good answer. Um, what about you, Charles? <laughs> you had to ask me. <laughs> and ask everybody. That's what you're <laughs> I think I'm with I'm with Carla, man. As long as she do the same stuff you do, like if she stay fit and she in the gym, she kind of understands. But it's when you deal with somebody who's not, uh, they tend to have a problem with me being in the gym for two and three hours. She think I'm doing something else. So why you got to dress like that to go to the gym? You know, shit like that. So yeah, as long as she would it too, I don't see a problem. You know, they always appreciate how you look, but not the work that you got to put in. You know, yeah. so. Yeah, I'm she, was, she, was, she was asking, she does it hinder your performance? Hinder my performance? No, nah, if anything, it make it better. <laughs> you got to build up that stamina. <laughs> <laughs> what else were you going to say? <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Um, Larry, you got anything on that? <laughs> I, I'm going to say, no, it doesn't hinder performance. It improves performance across the board. I mean, you know, you, you know, it helps out. You know, sometimes in the morning you're like, ah, you know, and then you go to the gym and you're like, you're feeling good. You're like, oh, like, I got this. I'm the man. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, what about you, Will? You got anything on this topic? No? All right. <laughs> uh, all right. So, in my opinion, um, it, it hasn't had any negative effects um, you know you're training hard you're you're raising your testosterone levels you raise your testosterone levels you're more um, for a lack of better word hungry um, so for me personally it's only helped and like Charles said if you have someone who's you know sharing that same uh, lifestyle with you um, for instance you go to the gym you guys both kill it I've, I've noticed that after a, a, a training session together, once we get home, 
I want more. I'm ready for cardio, if you get what I'm saying. So, uh, and I, you know, you're, you're, you see your partner sweaty and, you know, in there killing it. You go home, you're just that much more attracted. Um, I haven't had any sexual issues. If anything, I'm, I'm beasting it more. So, uh, yeah, I'd highly suggest keep it, keep it up in more ways than one. Um, all right, thanks for the questions, Charlie. Thanks for the questions. You've definitely uh, helped us out today. All right, so I'm going to take one more question, and then we're going to wrap this thing up. Let's see, let's see. That should be Vinadiza, and she's asking about uh, does anyone take ginger for muscle cramps? Um, I was told that it is a good source or, or supplement for that, and she was just wondering. So, Tony, you take it away. Um, honestly, I don't know much about ginger and um, helping with cramps. I've I've never used it for that. Um, I know ginger has a lot of other health effects, but as far as cramps go, um, I can't speak on that personally. Um, anybody else? No, nope. Carla. Well, I I just love hot ginger tea. We call everything hot tea. So um, I do drink it, but I don't know if it, um, you know, helps anything. But um, on that note, I have to go because my phone is going to die, and I have to uh, finish my appointment. No worries. So, well, we appreciate you. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. My right. love. Carla. Bye, Carla. Bye. All right, yeah. So um, we'll have to get back to you on that one. Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh. Yeah, we'll have to get back to you on that one. Um, the one thing that I, I know that helps is potassium. When you have a lot of cramps, um, you could have low potassium, and potassium helps out. Outside of that, I don't know of anything, and I don't know if ginger helps, but I do know that it helps with your libido. So people use that to, you know, get more cardio gains. <laughs> cardio gain. We keep coming back to sex on today's episode. It's crazy. Um yeah. Okay. Cool. Good. Good. Uh. Good question. And uh, that's pretty it, much it for the show. Um, I appreciate everyone um, who sent in their questions. Um, keep them coming. Uh, we're gonna do this every week. So thank you for your your questions. They're all good questions. Um, even Marston's uh, do you miss me question? And uh, big shout out to all our guest hosts today. Um, the Shadow Charles came out the the woodworks, made a uh, a cameo. Dude's like uh, Bigfoot. You see Bigfoot more than you see him on the Barbell Life, but I know he's there. Um, Big Will, thanks for coming in. Carla, appreciate it. Larry, the Guru, doing his uh, technical thing, helping us out here. Much love. And. Um, that's pretty much it. Like I said last episode, uh, we have something really huge in the works, and we're going to drop it on you really soon, I promise. So uh, other than that, thank you, everybody, for watching the show, and uh, we'll see you next week. I'm out.